What is going on, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We will start a new playlist called 5-Minute Review. A quick synopsis for the day before the exam. And we will start by talking about nephrotic syndrome, aka protein losing nephropathy. Welcome to the new playlist. Let me know what kind of topics would you like to hear about. When I first announced that I'm gonna do a playlist on 5-minute reviews, a lovely person commented, Try doing nephritic syndrome in 5 minutes, I dare you. <laughs> Who are these people? So, I'm up to the challenge. Today we'll talk about nephrotic syndrome, and next we'll talk about nephritic syndrome. To understand nephrotic syndrome, imagine two colanders. We're making apple juice today, so after using the blender, we used two colanders. The first one gave us pure apple juice with no debris, no seeds, no skin, nothing. The second colander gave us the apple juice plus seeds plus peel, skin, all kinds of debris. The question is, which colander is better? The answer is the first one, of course. The first colander is your normal kidney that does not lose protein in the urine. The second one, however, is nephrotic syndrome a kidney that loses tons and tons of proteins in the urine, about more than 3.5 grams every day, what nephrologists call nephrotic range proteinuria. Do you think the kidney is the only organ that loses your protein? Shut up! The causes of hypoproteinemia are numerous. First of all, you could be not eating protein, this is malnutrition, or quash your core, decrease protein synthesis if your liver is toast, or you could be losing protein. The gut could be the one losing your protein, or the kidney. When it comes to the gut, it could be malabsorption syndrome, usually the problem is in the intestine, or it could be a protein-losing gastropathy, menetrius disease, the problem is in the stomach. When the kidney loses protein, we call this protein-losing nephropathy or nephrotic syndrome. Regardless of the cause of your hypoproteinemia, the end result is you get edema. Is it an exudate or transudate? It's a transudate, which means it's pitting dependent with low uncotic pressure rather than increased hydrostatic pressure. Nephrotic syndrome, you're losing tons and tons of proteins in the urine, about more than 3.5 grams per day. When you're losing protein in the urine, you will have less protein in your blood. When the protein in your blood is low, the oncotic pressure of the blood vessel is gonna go down and therefore fluid will leave the capillary because now the hydrostatic is higher than the oncotic. When fluid leaves, it accumulates in the interstitial space, giving you edema. Nephrotic syndrome, are you ready? High protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia. Why hyperlipidemia? Because you lose proteins in the urine, including lipoprotein. The lipoprotein is like the taxi cab. Imagine that you woke up one morning with zero taxi cabs in the city. What's gonna happen to the number of people walking on their feet? It's gonna go up because there is less people in the taxi. Same thing here. When you lose the taxis, lipoproteins, what's gonna happen to the amount of lipid floating freely in the bloodstream? It's gonna go up. This is hyperlipidemia and hypertriglyceridemia. One of the proteins that you will lose in the urine is antithrombin-3. When you lose antithrombin, you will become thrombotic. Also, there is increased risk of gout because when the kidney is toast, the kidney cannot excrete uric acid. Bad kidney can give you secondary hypertension or renal hypertension. When you lose protein in the urine, it's the same as if you are malnourished. Lethargy, fatigue, anorexia, depression. The exact opposite to what happens to medicosis when I eat a juicy steak. Nephrotic syndrome, high protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia. What kinds of protein are you losing in the urine? I'm losing albumin, I'm losing antithrombin-3, I'm losing antibodies, I'm losing lipoproteins. Nephrotic is protein loss. Hey, Medicosis, I did the urine dipstick test and I found protein in the urine. Does that mean that the patient has nephrotic syndrome? Shut up. First of all, when you see proteinuria on urine dipstick, what do you do? You repeat it. If it disappears, this is called transient proteinuria and it's absolutely normal. Don't worry about it. But if it persists, that's a true proteinuria. If you find the proteinuria in the morning to be less than the proteinuria in the evening, this is orthostatic proteinuria. It happens to surgeons policemen all the time because they are standing all day. But if the morning and the evening are the same, this is persistent proteinuria. 
Should I blame the glomerulus or the tubule? Well, if the urine microalbumin is high, blame the glomerulus. If the urine beta-2 microglobulin is high, blame the tubule. Proteinuria is defined as loss of more than 300 mg per day or 0.3 grams per day. There are four tests to test for proteinuria. You have the urine dipstick, you have the 24-hour urine protein collection, which is difficult to obtain, so you have two other options, total protein to creatinine ratio or albumin to creatinine ratio. Nephrotic syndrome has five diseases. Nephritic syndrome, about four diseases. And you have two doofuses in common. What are the nephrotic diseases? Minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, diabetic nephropathy, amyloidosis. Let's say that the nephrotic syndrome was so bad that it caused ascites for the patient. Let's order the serum ascites albumin gradient. I have a separate video on this topic. And when you order that test, you will find that the gradient is low in cases of nephrotic syndrome. If you want to know why, check out my video called Serum Ascites Albumin Gradient. Nephrotic syndrome is minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, diabetic nephropathy, amyloidosis, the young, the addict, the thick, the sweet, the green apple. We'll talk about these doofuses in the next video. Here is a wonderful message that I've received from my student Veronica. I wanted to share with you, I got the highest grade on my antimicrobials exam. The average class score was in the 60s. I got 90.3. Congratulations. I wish I can send you a picture of the grade compared to other students. I believe you, Veronica. This is the course that she refers to. You can download my antibiotics course today from my website, medicosisperfectionatis.com. I also have a course about endocrine pharmacology plus gazillion other courses. What topics would you like to see next in this five-minute review playlist? Let me know the answer in the comment section. Please subscribe, hit the bell, click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.